So it's my pleasure to introduce Aaron Draplin. He's got a new book out called Pretty Much Everything, uh, about the mid-year tenure of his design career. Uh, and that's available in the back as well. Um, Aaron's awesome. He's got a fantastic uh, Mark Marin podcast out, if you haven't listened to it, that'll pretty much show you that he's just so inspired by everything that has to do with design and is so passionate about it that it rubs off on everybody. So without any further ado, uh, let's welcome Aaron, please. <laughs> All right. Okay, th this side of the room, settle down over there. That side of all those people. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. <laughs> this is so. No, I got I to use this thing today. Okay, everybody. Thank you for coming. I mean, of all the surreal things you get to do in your life, to go to, I use the product. I use the product. Thank you. Good job. We're here. We're broadcasting all over the world. And this is a book talk. I, I, I got to make a book. And, and let me test my multimedia real quick here. Now, how's that? Uh, how's that? Yeah, RGB is looking pretty good. And let me get to that mosaic filter. How are we looking in the back there? Everyone look okay? All right. Okay, good. Good. Okay, okay. Because I don't know if you know what I do. I mean, there are definitely faces here just doing that kind of thing where you're wondering where you're at. And you're wondering why you're looking at me. It's okay. I'm a person, I come from a family. My name is Aaron James Drapple. I'm 43 years old. I'm a graphic designer, I live in Portland, Oregon, and I come from a mom and a dad, and sisters and shit, and, and an almost brother-in-law, and I have a girlfriend, oh, is she lovely. Look at her, just a little bright spot in the back there, just, just radiating beauty and, and, and intelligence and grace. Her name is Lee. Um, you know, when you see this in the book, I. This is a spread that I didn't get paid any money, you know, and it, it, and, and what, why I love that is because I made a life in graphic design Where it wasn't always about just cash or big jobs or whatever. It was about the power sometimes of your mouse finger and how it could affect uh, uh, Your buddy and then when maybe and maybe there's a couple of things I got paid for it But they're all there and and you wouldn't know about that stuff because maybe you would know about me making logos You know, I, I would hope so I love to make logos and I have kept myself super busy. Nine out of 10 of these were just for fun. You know, this wasn't, uh, 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 in a lot of ways, I tricked graphic design into hiring me by keeping myself busy because then people couldn't tell what was the big job or the little job. And then when someone big calls, reacting to something that I did for my buddy, I manifested a life in graphic, I tricked him in so many ways. You know, if you know about field notes, well, these are all over Manhattan, these are all over Brooklyn, they're all over the, you know, whatever, New York City. And we're up to 2,000 stores, but this was just because I couldn't find ones that I liked. So I made my own. Now, there's no license for that. I just made my own. And we're like 13 employees now, which is really crazy. It could have just been me, but we're like a thing now, you know? Uh, all these years later, you know, I've been making posters for all these places I've been able to go. I'm up to about 46 of the 50 states. Um, me and the Virginias, we're not talking right now, but... Instead of putting my face on one of these posters for one of the shows I've been able to go do, we would make something for Iowa that was a little bit more like your, maybe your mom and dad would like it. Dead logos, dead things, colloquialisms, little sayings and weird things that I would dig up from my travels or photos or stuff. So maybe you know about those or all the merch I've made over the years. And this, there was no bottom line to this, that it was supposed to be this like thing where I was supposed to make a profit. No, this was all just for fun. And I use all this stuff. And that's like rule number one. It has to be real. But there's a charm to getting an ice scraper. Or there's a charm to getting a patch or a sticker. Or, well, I couldn't call it the chip clip due to proprietary reasons, but it's called a snack clamp at the DDC. Uh, you know, you all eat chips, so just settle down. With that side of the room, you really got to just back off just a little bit. Okay, thanks. It's called crowd control. Now. If you know about me messing with dead logos, I love dead logos. And you'll find a logo today when we were at the, the Con Edison. That's a classic New York logo. And on the side of every cab, that's a classic New York logo. And if you know how to look, it's out there. But these are these little diamonds of complete, like there's, no, there's, not, there's not one pretentious element to it. And you guys know, you know, you guys are inventing the web. I'm trying to make a living, whatever. And it's like sometimes there's just so much like like icing on the cake, you know. And when you're out there, I love taking photos of dead stuff and on a delusional sense using this in my work. So maybe you've seen this on my Instagram or, you know, over the years me championing these things because 
when it goes away, we're going to be at the mercy of clicks and likes and, you know, aggregated things. And then everything is a fucking Star Wars remix poster. So, you know, that's kind of where we're at. If you've seen one of these shows, today is number 300. I think it's 300 in the last six years. I have gone everywhere. We will be putting a dot in Jackson Hole on the way back out west this year. All of this stuff, if you know about me or not, it's all packed into a book. I got to make a book on a big city, New York City publisher. This is a new talk. It's called We Got a Book Deal or, well, our chance to you know, tell you about the harrowing account. But I didn't get into graphic design to make a book. I got into graphic design to make a living. And that's just the best way to put it. I know the people who got into it to, uh, I get to be backstage with them, who talk a certain different, just a different way and have these like these such a certitude to like how good they are and how deserved they are of making books and shit. If it didn't happen, I was cool. I had a great life in graphic design already. I made that happen for myself and my buddies around me. But I got to make this thing. So I got this call to the big leagues, and that's Abrams. They're just up on, I think it's 20th, you know, and uh, something. Not that far from here, <laughs> big city. But... You know, this is a big league deal. Yesterday I was there, I was looking through a Damien Hurst selection. Like Damien Hurst is on a, some imprint of Abrams, you know, but people closer to me would be like uh, 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 Sagmeister's on Abrams. Uh, Victoria was on Abrams. Uh, those are big names in graphic design and art and thinking and, and sort of like these big provocative guys, you know. And when I got that call, I was kind of scared. Because I don't weigh in like they do, you know? But that's me meeting John, my, you know, John Gall, my editor. And, and that's, this is me sealing the deal where it was like, I was afraid to go do it. Because in my life, it's okay to say no and be small. But this was scary territory, you know? So that's how I threatened them all summer long, 2015 too. Well, you get a contract. You sign that contract. And it goes from zero to shit's due like quick, right? <laughs> So everything was cool up to that point. Oh, Aaron, we love what you do and all that, you know. <laughs> and then it's going. So I, I, I'm cool with that. I know how to deal with a client. And I, I know, how, you know now how to deal with a bunch of smart people in the city who are ready to get this thing done. Now, compensation's weird because all I was ever concerned about was how many books could I get? Because, yes, you get paid to just be a part of it. And that's usually how a book works is you give all this stuff in a shoebox like, you die is usually how it works. And then somewhere an estate takes all the big designer or name or artist work into, out of her studio or whatever. They build a book for the person. And then the book comes out on an imprint, you know, and that's how it goes. But I was just like, I'm still alive. And I said, well, who designs it? Well, we have two people here in New York City. No, no, no. I, I dabble in graphic design. I dabble. You know, who writes it? Oh, we got this smart graduate. But if a graduate said, I'm writing the fucking book. So. I got paid to be a part of it, build it, and then like write it, right? Which meant this, 1,500 books, <laughs> all right. So that's Barnes and Noble like price. You know, that's just, that's just, that's what I got paid. And, and I was cool because in the game of perception, if Abrams sold one, I knew I had 1,500 to go push on the road or give to all my buddies. Book number one went to my mom, right? So that was worth it. But then that shit shows up and, you know, it filled this stage, 1,500 books. You know, I don't know how to use a pallet jack. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we like screwed up the elevator rugs and shit because I had like 3,000 pounds of books in there and, you know, whatever. But it's real easy for me to get up here in front of all this lavish crowd. See, what you guys can't see on YouTube there are 10,000 people sitting here. Listen to them. There's 11 people. <laughs> There's more people in this fucking photo than there are in this whole room. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. So thank you. Uh, it's real easy for me to be like, I did this. I did that. I did. I'm great. I make a book and all that shit. There's a bunch of people that make these things. I got to go do this talk yesterday to all the people at Abrams who helped me make my book. And a year ago, I went there. You know, we're getting ready to start seeing them show up. And it was March of last year. And I thanked every single one of them, hand over a cubicle, like, thank you for believing me and, and, and doing this thing. It's going to be awesome. I can't remember the names. Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike, Jackie, Jackie, I can't remember all the names. There's so many people. They're all good looking and healthy and nice. There's me and, of course, John. But 
you know, I thanked them all. And I did yesterday too, because, you know, this wasn't supposed to happen. And yet they kind of say like, our authors don't even come into the office sometimes because that's just business, you know, fine. But <laughs> I'm going to haunt all these people the rest of their lives with this thing. And I have to thank them for letting me do this. Now the schedule was weird. I thought it would take two years. No, 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 no. We did it in about three and a half months. I got the call in November of 2014. I bought ddcbook.com that afternoon, freaked out. Signed the contract five months later in March of 2015. We started the book in June of 2015, had it done by September, handed off by November, printing January of last year, and it came out May 17th. So this idea of like, I got to build and write and design and compile for about three and a half months. And then it just, the process of whittling down, you know, all the typos and things, and the first printing had 26, but it took three months, you know, to like just to get it ready to hand off. And that's just called being, you know, published, you know. The basic elements, you know, are really, really simple. See, there's a bit of a chip in my shoulder because, you know, like, it's a great privilege to be here with you guys. It's a great privilege to have the book. It's a great privilege in a weird way to have people come after you because they know your name because you have this book or something or because they know your name from some poster site or something. And I read all the comments, I'm a human being, you know, and, and, and the idea that like, I'm gonna call this a mid-career survey, like that just sounds so official. You know, I wanted to show this, pack it as much as possible, all the shit I pulled off. But it's kind of a chip on the shoulder because listen, for every little turd who's come after me, grad students, and come after me because I've tried to live a life creatively and tried to live a life, you know, ethically working for clients I like and make things I like, even to a loss, I'm a target. And I read that shit as a human being. So making this book in a lot of ways was a lot of, one kid said, that drapple's a one trick pony. I'll never forget that because I was like, well, he's about 16 in that stagecoach. You know, I'm a little biased, but it's like, man, you can't, he doesn't know about this. He, that kid didn't, I made snowboard magazines for seven years. But what's important is I know my way around a grid and snowboarding doesn't look like that. It, snowboarding, you know, skateboarding and shit, I mean, it's wild and stuff, but we made our mag so you could actually read it and read the articles and look at the photos and not have it just bombarded with all the latest tricks and shit. Now, that could have been maybe, if I dare, you know, a dwell or something, the things that I aspire to, but they don't know that I know my way around the grid. They don't know that stuff. How do you go back? They don't know, if you look at the top row on the, on the top right, that's not chicks in bikinis. That's a women's issue we made. And the women had their, let them go for it. We don't, we're not there to mess with them. We're there to say, you're just as valid on the hill as we are, go. And they had their women's issue and it was super cool because see, they don't know about that shit. I'm proud of that, that's in the book. They don't know about 12 years with Cole Headwear where it started with two of us in a basement and there's 20 or 30 kids there now. They don't know about that stuff. I did every hang tag for a decade you know, on a, on a hat. Or, or every year for Union Binding Company, we'd make 50 logos. They don't, they don't know about this stuff. So to be, uh, they're like cheap shots. I've just learned the internet is forever, at least right now. And when you leave that stuff, that's what you're gonna be known for. And it takes all my strength not to go back to that kid. So making the book was kind of a big old hairy, well, whatever. I know my way around the grid. Here's all the stuff I got to make. You know, and it's a simple system, you know? It's some typefaces, it's a simple grid, you know, something there, write an essay, big old hit of orange, some tricky content. That's my nephew, Oliver, six years old. First tooth just came out, so cute. That's, our, that's the light of our lives, my nephew, Oliver. Last summer's lowest points, well, it should say, yeah, you know, this was summer 2015, but I worked every, every day that day. And because it was my shot to do it, you know, and and this shit that like, like I was forced to do this. First of all, they came to me. They came to me. I didn't go to them. I'm not going to go knock on there. A lot of kids ask me, how did you submit your work to get it into a book? And I was like, what are you talking about? This was a record deal. They gave me the record deal. So when it was my shot to go do it, I'm not screwing that up. I was scared. I was on a contract. But, you know, I would leave the house, rip down to the shop in Portland, work all day and go home at four in the morning. And when I would go home at four in the morning, I wouldn't even put my pants on. I would just drive home with no pants on. And then it got so weird that summer. Hello to this side of the room, all of you 
other 3,000. Hi. You know, hey, I wasn't wearing pants on the way to the job. You know, at 7.45 in the morning, which is a little tricky getting onto the elevator uh, out of the basement at the shop. So no complaints, though. No complaints. I mean, I just worked all day, 17, 18 hours. Now, listen, behind every 586 pound graphic designer who is uh, 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 probably getting a ticket, triple parked in, in Brooklyn right now, probably, uh, well, not debatable, uh, chafed, uh, here in the city, sweating. Behind every one of those graphic designers, at least right now, is a patient, patient girlfriend. And her name is Lee McColi. And she's right there, just a little bright spot, just a little buttercream icing rose on a big orange turd cake. Look at her. Look at her. Isn't she just lovely? And please get a nasty Prince song in your head right now, something real wet, okay? You got it? Because look at her. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she just... God, what did you guys expect for what you're paying, right? Look at her. Look how, look how sweet. She's three there. Look at the symmetry. Look at the symmetry. What is she doing with me, right? Right? Graph Design took me to Berlin. Lee got hammered on that first class trip over there back. It was great. She likes to sing, and I don't even know what a salt cave is, but, um, you know, that's... That's the one person that summer that, that really made sure that I didn't eat out of a bag every night, right? And would, you know, would bring me stuff to work or get me home and I would you know, have a somewhat regular meal for dinner and then you know, work late. So I have to thank her because we're on this tour and this shit's not easy. I'm 43 years old, Lee is, and you know, I'm not gonna get into it, you know? But I want you to see this because this is cool. She has shacked up gone right to the muck and is in, in it with me in this thing and poor girl but she's a, she's a, she's around resources because I'm doing this stuff all the time and you know that turd Don Trump no one voted for him here right <laughs> not for the crowd who's not here not one even motion of, of because you know if you did you're complicit but uh, 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 she's pissed. Don Trump railed the wrong cage. And she made these little postcards. And we're selling them at our merch table. Not today, but on the road on this tour. But that's my favorite one. Wait until our periods sync up. So uh, you can send this to your senator or congressman and tell them that they're stupid. And Lee will facilitate that for you on her little postcards. She's already raised two grand for the ACLU with this thing. So if you go to Notes to Self, you can see her project starting. Starting. This is a person, and she's pissed, and she's fighting back creatively. And that's a lesson for all of us, and definitely me. I don't know what to do. I'm afraid of that turd, so I don't know what to do. But I, I, you know, thank you, Lee, for coming today. Thank you for coming on this tour. All right, here's a shop tour. Now, that's the shop. That's it. That's where I get to be. There's no reception. There's no Star Trek doors you walk through like we just did 40 seconds ago, right? <laughs> I saw him. It was cool. Those credentials and shit. I get it. We're at Google. Now, those are my two partners. That's John Femister. That's Dave Nakamoto. There's no pants if you don't want pants at my shop. I got to be with my buddies for 10 years in this shop, and I love them for it. Because this wasn't about some who hates their boss here, and no one's raising their hand. It's all being recorded. Who hates their boss here? A couple half hands. Well, <laughs> there's no boss here. We take care of each other. And I'm just so proud to even show that I got to do it in this with my buddies and get away with it and make a killer living, take care of myself and my mom and my dad and Lee and my, my sisters and shit here amongst all my little trinkets and goodies and stuff. This exists. And I've, I've gone to all these cool places and saw cool cubicles and stuff. I know, but I can tell you this. I raced to get to my shop every day. And I'm proud to even say that that exists. Okay, who's got a book? Okay, he's, he's flipping right now. It's a random page flip and he landed on. Good job. My summer as a carny. Do we have any carnies in the crowd? What is this? Thing? Do we have any carnies in the crowd? Okay, well, I was a carny one summer. That would be 1994. I, I went out west as a youngster in 93 to be a snowboarder with all my asshole buddies. And how we got out there was we had like a... Uh, summer jobs and you know all summer of 93 went out the winter of 93 19 years old me and my buddies 
You know, if you haven't done that yet where you move somewhere crazy, now usually I'm telling this to 22 year olds in a, in a college, but if you haven't done it yet, go do it because it'll be better when you're 24 than when you're 43 like me, right? But we got it out of our system at 19. We went and did this, went all the way out west and then had to come back with our tails between our legs, broke and had to work another summer. And I got this job in a carnival. And it was, a, you know, like a traveling deal all summer long in Michigan. But there's a hierarchy to this stuff. Someone owns all the rides and all the stuff and books all the shit, hires all the carnies. But they run the thing. They rent to a food court. The food court hires us as sort of college kids. We work for the food court. We're in a pizza wagon, me and my buddy Chad. We sign a kind of, a, you know, just a, hand, a gentleman's handshake all summer with our guy. We're going to work, you know, 12 weeks. But at the, underneath that are the carnies all the way at the bottom. And we're not really supposed to hang with the carnies. I mean, they're rough, they're kind of dirty, you know, whatever. They're just kind of hard scrabble people. But two weeks in, Chad and I, we're doing our pizza wagon. We're noticing every night there's a little table and they're giving draws based on daily earnings. So if someone worked and they tore the stuff down or they put it all up and they ran the ride, the carnies all day, at the end of the day, they've got this little table, get five, 10, 15 bucks. And you do that every night plus pay, they were charged to sleep in these little like uh, air conditioned like uh, uh, sleeper units or something. Well, here's the deal. Three weeks in, every night, Chad and I, we would cavort with the carnies. We'd take them in our truck into town to go hit like a supermarket. Because if you're, if you're not doing that, you're eating elephant ears and pizza all summer long, you know? And that kind of worked for some people, but we were going in to kind of like stock up. So we'd put people in the back of our truck and we became buddies and we were hanging out with the carnies. I remember one kid, 31 years old, he had his 15 or 16 year old kid with him. Like, just do the math on that shit. That's what's going on. So Chad and I, as compassionate people, you know, we're like, well, all right, these, these guys are cool. But three or four weeks in, getting those draws, we'd say, hey, you know, how come you're not coming in with us tonight to some kid? And he'd be like, well, I'm broke, you know. At the end of those two weeks or whatever, they're taking a draw. They're getting the charge for like, the, some guys would like be in tents outside of their vans driving along to save money. All that shit's taxed. And sometimes people would owe money to the carnival. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? And they'd work it off, I guess, the next couple of days. But you know what? I had a mom and a dad. I had a little bit of college. I had direction. I had this wanderlust to go west. These kids didn't have that. I had a support system. My mom and dad didn't cut me a check to go west. We worked all summer. But I had them help me when I came back just to give me my old room back or whatever, right? And it's like I had their creative support and teeth care. And these kids didn't. And Chad and I watch this shit go down and we're watching people make some bad decisions maybe because it's kind of like, I don't know, like a gentle indentured servitude or something. Those carnies still have put those rides back together. These people had, were legacied into this shit. So Chad and I, like a couple dumbasses from Midwest with a heart, we start watching and we start stealing. And how we did it is when the guy would come with a $4.75 Mountain Dew this big, Give me a five dollar bill. I'm supposed to give him a quarter back. I give him change for a 20 and we Robin Hooded that shit the rest of the summer and Took care of these guys and here's the deal. Do we have any paralegals in the crowd that know amusement law in, in Northern Michigan Do we have any of that because I don't know what the word is fucking I published the thing and like I'm gonna get my teeth knocked out or something when I go You know from some guy who's pissed that I stole money from them all summer long, 94, to, to take care of the carnies. Okay, got a tough crowd, you know, I know. I know lunch hours in 19 minutes, you know, okay. When you see, uh, is this even fun? Yeah. I just, I don't know, you know? you know. People are checking, landing planes off of uh, 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 laptops and shit, I don't know. We're human beings, and I, you, I talk, I say things, you listen, you re re react. Now look, when I made field notes, <laughs> I made them with my hands based on this stuff. These are ghosts of the Midwest, you know, and, and you know, your, your, your grandpa who had them in his pocket, that worked a hundred years ago and it still works now. My phone, when it goes, when it, when it gets like 12%, I'm, I'm really uneasy. And that's a new thing. Little kids are born now with their hands like this, you know, like in the womb. And they wake, you get to plug that shit in their hand. And you're just looking, looking. It's true. <laughs> 
you know, we're putting dots on a map with our little field notes project. This is ours. It's ours. Any profit is ours. Any losses, it's ours. There's no board or nothing like that. You know, it's ours. And, and that's a great lesson that we can invent these things for ourselves. Because, you know, when I got free from clients and things and stuff, that, that's where I got to, like, use my earnings to, like, go and invent my life. That whole story about how we made those is in the book. But I love to show a spread in the book, which is totally vulnerable. This is every field note I had in my pocket for the last, you know, 10 or 11 years or whatever, you know. And it's like to show that in the book was really important to me because I want, I want to demystify, you know, how you make these things. Because, listen, I get to go be around the people who totally know how to, like, talk the shit up. But really, it was there. Me making notes on paper. And that's where I was free and I could be organized, make a list. Who here still makes a grocery list on a scrap of paper? People do because it works. You go into Whole Food, Whole Paycheck, you go in there and you can't concentrate. There's just a million things. That worked for your grandma and your, your, your grandpa and that works for us. And we forget that because, you know, our phones, you know, I get it. But I love to show that when I had a sticker from a banana, I stuck it in my field notes. That's designed too on a banana. And you can learn, you know, or what it's like to be packed on a plane. There it is, you know. So that's where it was, you know, me drawing in my field notes for all these years and making a list and scratching everything off and feeling free at the end of the day because it's not the same with a swipe. It's not the same, you know. And like when my phone dies, I can't handle it. But on paper, when they make you put your laptop away in the plane, out come my field notes. And I'd make way better ideas there, you know. There's me and Jim Kudal, my, you know, captain, you know, the den mother, you know, my brother, who's he's really steered this thing into something good. They're all over Manhattan. They're all over the nation. And I have to thank him, you know, because my stupid little non-idea became a real thing. And that, that whole story's in there. Today, today, ah, this came out. When I saw this, in Hollandale, Mississippi, it just was so beautiful to me, this, this corrugated sign, the linting factory sign thing, the, the typeface. And I was like, man, what is that thing? It's so simple. It's based on how many, like the, 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 the grid of the corrugated lines of this thing. So here's the first you know, F word. It's so functional you know, and perfect. And I just took a photo, and that night in my hotel room on the Highway 61 in Mississippi, I went looking for it and couldn't find it, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. So fuck it, I built it. And I built that thing, uh, 2004, 2005, 10 years I used it out of Illustrator and would hunt and peck. If I needed Google, G-O-O-G-L-E, and build it and use it in something until Riley Cran got his hands on it from Lost Type, built it into a beautiful, beautiful three-weight character set. It works for a hundred languages. It came out today. When you open my phone on the way over, it, I put it up. Last night they put it up, and then I put my links up this afternoon on my Instagrams and all that, or this morning on my Instagrams, and you could just see the things just flying in. Like, we built a typeface. And, I mean, we've got a little site lit for it. But, you know, talk about revival, you know. Now, see, this is going to be posted somewhere. But with all those kids who are buying DDC hardware, my little typeface today, what they don't know, they're getting a free poster. That comes right out of my pocket. And that free poster has decimal equivalents because that's where this stuff was meant to work. This isn't cool, but we don't have this kind of typeface that's just meant to be unfuck withable, right? We don't have that. Now, I know you got a nice bunch of Google typefaces and all that good. Good, this shit's great, looks good this big on the phone and shit, great. But I want these things to be look, to look shitty when it says park here. Because when someone grabs one of your beautiful articulate web fight faces and tries to do it with that, it doesn't work sometimes. So we built this thing to work vertically, you know? Or we have the Ogonek and Jankuya for, for thank you in Polish. You know, I'm sure I'm butchering that, but... There's the Ogonek, that little E thing. You know, we have diacritics to work for a hundred languages. So I'm proud of that. This thing can go all over the world. And whether or not it sells, it's revival. I saw something that didn't exist. I acted on it. And it's not to be ironic. It's meant to just be functional. So that came out today. So go check it out. DDC Hardware. It'll be all over my feed and stuff. That's going today. My favorite story from the book. My dad, 1983, I'm nine years old, takes me to a Tigers game with my uncles. I'm there, I'm nine, I'm a third baseman. 
you got your jersey, your hat, your glove. And I remember going in. It's Polish American night. So my dad, who wasn't much of a drinker, he liked to play up. He was. Wasn't much of a drinker. My dad had a couple beers that night. Was feeling no pain. And I remember we get there, and he's a little wobbly. And I remember him saying, "Don't worry, punk. I'm gonna get you a ball." My cousins who were with me they didn't want nothing to do with a nine-year-old. They take me down to the railing, get a you know I don't know. Batting practice ball, nothing. We go out to center field. A couple balls are bouncing around. Mother hitting homers and shit. You know, batting practice. Kids are diving for them. I'm nine. I don't know what to do. Now, 1983, I don't have a photo of my dad, but I do have one from 2003. And there's my dad. And I like to call this shot mid sip. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad says, "I'm going to catch you a ball," and it's first inning, second inning. They sing in the seventh, you know, and then eighth inning. Ninth inning, Ron Hassey's up to bat, knocks one back, foul ball, top of the dugout, third base dugout, we're behind that, bounces in front of us, two rows or something. My dad dives with his beer, <laughs> catches the ball, my uncles lift him up, doesn't spill the beer, <laughs> and my dad caught me a ball. And he put it in my lap and he goes, I told you I was going to get you a ball, Aaron. He babe Ruth that shit, and that's in the book. That's in the book. Now, we have a little extra time. Turns out, my dad did that with a puck at a Red Wing game for my Uncle Kevin 10 years before me. So that is amazing. Another favorite section. They're drawing me now. What am I supposed to do when they hand you this shit at one of these shows? You just, you know, I don't know. Look, they hand you that portrait. It's like this big. I'm not putting that up in my office, but it was like emotional. Look at the, the likeness. It's so crazy. And that's my buddy John Hammer in Tulsa, an incredible painter, illustrator, just an incredible person. I don't know him that well, but I'll love him forever for him doing that of me. And now, like, when I'm gone, I guess Nakamoto, Lee, Dave put this up on my desk because I'm gone for 10 weeks. So when the people come in there, they're like, why does he have a painting of himself on his desk? That's there. They're embroidering me now. Yeah. When they hand you that one, this is a buddy in Portland. I love him, but the eyes are all wonky and shit. I know he did it on purpose, but you just love them and you say it's perfect. And you put them on your Instagram, and then, of course, this. Ugh. <laughs> this is in the book. Two spreads dedicated to all the guys and girls who drew me. And I thank them, and it's just so cool. We fought for this. The book is 40 bucks. It had to be affordable. I couldn't. MoMA today. We're going to go see it. 40 bucks. You bought it. Amazon pre-order was 24 bucks. I was so thankful. This thing support me. <laughs> Sorry. 16 cents a page, not bad. It's amazing. Like I fought for that. We made little sticker sheets that went with it when we were done. This isn't Abrams, this is me. I just I ponied up and just did these things. I made a little slip case that was beautiful. And we saw these at the shows. Because I wanted an American-made slip case to hold this little gem. And that, those were made in Wisconsin, and they're perfect. And I, I made those. We sold a mountain of them when the, book, the day the book, the, you know, the, the book came out. Now, we're on a book tour. Now, look at her on that orange van. Look at her. Buttercream icing rose. Look at her. Now, we're going everywhere. Today is 300. I have to update this shit, but we have gone so many places. Last fall alone, we did 34 shows, seven weeks, 12,000 miles. It's awesome. Because, listen... I went yesterday to Abrams and like, people don't go on book tours. I'm going on a book tour. I wasn't supposed to get to make a book. Oh, I'm not, you're not supposed to go do a tour. We already did it. In the next two months, shit, we're going to all these places right here. I mean, we're halfway through. I don't even know where the hell Hampton Roads is. Does anyone know where that is? I don't even know. They signed the contract. I'm going. I can't wait. And we're going to Newfoundland. And we got to come here and tell our story. We're in a tour van. It is quadruple parked in, 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 in Brooklyn. It's orange. It's orange. And listen, you know, it's a book tour. What do you do? Do you put a graphic on the side of that thing? You know, my buddies all came out of the woodwork. Hey, we could wrap it. We could do this. I don't know. Should I be conversational? Should I just <laughs> kind of hard sell, you know? <laughs> kind of Massimo Vignelli influence, you know, sort of just van. Like graphic design, you know, like... Thick lines, posters, and shit. Or tonight. And that halfway house. 
these two are at right here. These two are at that halfway house, and it's court, court ordered. And they get out of Google. They go back to the halfway house. They get in the meds and all that, and then they, they get in there, and the door's locked, and it's okay. They are healing. And they're in there in the rooms. They look out their window through the chains, you know, and all this. And look, look out the window, and idling in the drive is that. That's the van, Mako orange. <laughs> did a Mako factory paint job, so much money, but it was, oh, it's orange all the way through. You open the doors up, it's all the way orange. You know, so awesome. When I roll it tonight in the Holland Tunnel, going too fast with 3,000 pounds of books in that fucker, well, it'll look like that. So, some numbers. First printing was sold out before the book came out, May 17, 2016. Right away, they go into the second printing. Third printing went at the end of last summer. The fourth printing went about a month ago. We're eight months into this thing, and it's in its fourth printing. And I can't talk about it, but if you've ever been to Cadillac, Michigan, at peak season in the peak season in the in the summer, is about thirty-one thousand people. But anyway, I can't really talk about the numbers. So, in Grapevine, Texas, we saw my book on the bottom of the shelf, right next to Design Basics Index. And I just stood there and kind of like, Lee was at the Starbucks, and I just stood there kind of kind of cried, like, oh, shit, my book's at Barnes & Noble's. It's, not, it's at MoMA. That's the coolest. But you can get it at a Barnes & Noble's in Grapevine, Texas. And I stood there, I flipped out seeing that, and then, of course, I cleaned off all that shit at the top row, put mine up there, and ran out. So I got to go quick. I got to make a logo for Mr. Obama. I vote for human rights and shit, so I was excited to help him. We saw shit change that day in 2009. Who went? Who went? Who went? Well, Lee and I were there representing the good people of Google. Uh, I was a fan of this. I loved this. I loved what he represented. I loved intelligence, grace, cool. That meant that to me. This is a new kind of campaign, a new kind of president. And he got it. And I was so proud to support him. Now, I get this call from these guys saying, hey, on a Wednesday, you want to make a logo for the president? Now, what are you talking about? This is a Wednesday. These guys are calling from Chicago. Now, I'm not supposed to make stuff like for him like this. Me and my buddy Chris Glass made these logos for America. We did it over days, busted them out in my hometown with the good old boys. And there's good old boys in New York, and there's good old boys in stupid Michigan, whatever. They say horrific things about Mr. Obama. I get it. But I was at that thing, and I said, well, you're back to work on the road commission. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did the logo for the Road Commission. You're back on for what you just called him, you know? So that's a weird little thing, but I got to work not just for liberals and blue and shit. I got to work for America. When the Fox News got us, we had death threats because I worked for an antichrist president. That's real. I, I have the emails. Four days later, Mr. Obama, President Obama, shows our logos to America. We did it in four days over a weekend. My buddy Chris Glass and I, we got to work, yeah, for our country, you know? Now, this is my greatest hit. It's all downhill from there. But I wanted to meet him. And I'm on the road entertaining precisely this section of the crowd. Like people like you guys. People like you guys. Work release. Work release. I get it. <laughs> I'm out there entertaining those guys. And Lee's back home. And we get the nod. And she gets to go meet the Prez at the airport in Portland. And she goes. And she does her best Jackie O and gets all dressed up and rips down there. And I'm on the road entertaining them. And she gets to meet the Prez. And I didn't. And I'm still pissed. And <laughs> she got, you know, after this shot, he's right here. And she, you can't put your phone in his face. All the Secret Service tell you not to. And he goes to the next one. And there he was. And she gets, gets to her car 20 minutes later. And she's like near tears. Like, we believed. We believed. Now what? You know, now what? And we're terrified. But for those eight years, I was so proud of him. And then, ho oh, oh, and then last summer, and I got you all right where I want, right in the pocket. I got you right where I want you, right in the one. And that little, by the way, I got to tell you something. I got a whole new life going right now. I got a whole new life going. You know what I discovered? A whole expanse of freedom, comfort, and movement. Stretch denim. I did. And I've got you in that little pocket right there, right where I want you. So look at We go up to SeaTac last year. You know what lands. I'm there in my best Cabela's Bargain Cave sweatshirt or whatever. <laughs> and he gets off the plane. He comes down. He shakes all the hands of all the dignitaries in town, Seattle. Comes running up to us. 
gets about me to the corner of the stage, and I just, oh, shit, I started to cry. Because it was, you know, it's Brock, and I, I believed in him. When he got to us, we got to, gets to Lee right here. They, like, know each other. Like, hey, Lee, hey, Brock, you know, fucking fist bumping and shit. When he got to me, all I could say was, I'm going to miss you, man. That's what I told him. Now, I'm crying my eyes out right there. And I guess because he kind of took pity on me, I got the handshake, I got the hand clap. Lee says he even hit me in the shoulder, kind of a buck up kind of moment. But if we go back one, look at the face of that Secret Service agent. That is not the face of security. That is pity. Because I'm crying my eyes out, meeting the leader of the free world just to say thanks for having fucking dignity. He did. You can't take that shit away from him. And this new turd we have, now what? Well, I got to work for Bernie, too. I got to make three posters for Bernie, which was so cool. And then a year ago, we came to the Bowery, and we went and saw an art show with all of our names, and we got to see And then he shows up, and there's arms and elbows and assholes and whatever, and I can't see. And there's a little bit of Bernie right there. <laughs> And I, it happened so fast. And there's my buddy Lewis Calderon helping him up to his little, my buddy Lewis worked for him out of Burlington where Lewis is from and worked for Bernie and got to help him on this whole campaign. And then Bernie does his, you know, top 1%, whatever. And then, and then there's Lewis looking at me going, why are you crying, Draplin? I'm in the back watching this shit and I can't see nothing. And then he's gone and there's lights and motorcades and shit. And I was digging around the web and I found a photo for proof. I don't have proof, but I found proof. <laughs> yeah. He's, there it is. I'll do it one more time. We got it. No, I, okay, okay, okay. We got to keep going. We gotta. Don't forget, you guys, right this very second, however you vote, love, freak out, whatever, right this very second, New York, goddamn New York City, we are in a vast, mysterious, infinite, Big old question mark. You can go this way to 141st in Amsterdam, I think it is, to where uh, my cousin Tommy lived, up to 1-9 or whatever, when I was 25 years old the first time I came here. You can go that way nine miles or eight, six miles, or whatever it is. Now, you can go this way to New Paramus. We'd go to Home Depot and Paramus six more miles. Great, great, great. You can go 60, 666 trillion miles this way right this very second, and that's real. This way, 666 trillion miles, and that's real right this second, right now. And theoretically, we could go in this direction infinitely. And that's real right now. Does anyone think of this shit? That's real right now. I know your lives go by faster here in this big city. But I think about that shit, and it brings me to tears. And it's so beautiful to me that I get to be one little mole on the ass. Great, big, grand mystery. That's real, because B... A says you can go forever. B says if you go quick enough, you get to the edge as existence is creating its herself, as it's making herself out there. What the hell is it expanding into right now? Or if you can go in one direction forever, I don't know, just get cosmic. And don't forget that shit. If that turd in the White House would think this way just a smidge more, yeah. I think we all could chill out a little bit, but that's real, and I, I'm, I'm blown away by it. I don't want you to forget about it. We gotta go quick. Okay, recent nasties. Space, I missed a space shuttle on unfunny shows. Uh, me telling all the Nike execs at TEDx Portland, I don't need your money. Guess who doesn't get calls from Nike anymore? It's okay. Uh, field, new field notes and logos. These are posters that go to Art Education Inch by Inch Project out of uh, 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 Indiana. My buddy's Drew and, and, and Bob. My buddy made a skillet company, Finex, and I got to do, you know, type and logos for it. And he's up to like 28 employees. That's so cool. My dad died. I got him tattooed on my arm. It was kind of looking wonky. And I got a bloody toothpick somehow. I started art directing him. He got all pissed off. <laughs> it's my arm. Dinosaur Jr. poster, which Hodgman saw, and I made one for him for his big comedy tour. This is my, my, my friend Maya and her incredible little, little company she's making up in Burlington. It's going to be called The Hungry P. <clears throat> this is stuff for Target, for a big art show in Aspen, but not as cool. Yeah, it's cool, but it's kind of like rich people go to that shit. Like, I got to do an, one of the first GBTA cards for Target when you check out, because shit's changing, and I'm so proud to have helped out in that. This is for Justin Vernon's big bony bear, you know, his big festival. I got to do the logo and stuff, but I also did the backstage passes that first year. I know how to make 
the crusty stuff as much as I know how to make the fun stuff. And my last Nike logo I'll do, you know, for a Janoski shoe, which is skateboarding stuff. I grew up in skateboarding, and that's a big shoe for them, and I got to work on that. That was cool. Our third Skillshare is out. It's going crazy. My buddy Elliot's just somewhere down here on the lower, you know, uh, west side. We're going to go see those guys while we're here. They put me on a magazine cover, How to Kill a Magazine 101. Uh, it's a multimedia. It's a multimedia. See, it wasn't a, it wasn't a problem. It wasn't a problem. Your Google shit was de de detecting, you know, that there was something wrong, corrupt. No, no, no. It's a multimedia. Two million on that Vimeo link. Whew. Now little kids come up to me in the airport with their moms, and the mom, like, lets her go, and the little girl comes to me, and she says, are you Adam Drake? Glenn? And I said, yeah, I am. Hi, hi. She goes, I want to make logos when I grow up. That happened to me a summer ago. She saw this video. Marin let me do his poster for his show in Portland, and then he put me on the podcast. That's my greatest hit, so go check that out. It's real weird, you know? <laughs> Polish mugs, and I've been painting. I've been painting. And it, you know, it's just dumb shit around me, you know? And my sister Leah's all pissed because she said I gave her a neck beard, and whatever. <laughs> now look at my nephew Oliver. So proud. He's on the ground, I'm up on a ladder. And we're, all, these, are all the, these are all the signs we made for my dad's garage sale last summer. Because now I'm patriarch in training. And mom says, we need signs. So me and Oliver get to work that, 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 you know, that morning and we make signs. And do people know, when they were turning into that garage sale, they were being by, guided by signs from the hand of one of the greatest living graphic designers of this generation. <laughs> they don't know that shit. They don't know that. <laughs> they don't know. Look at the concentration on his face. He's at a third grade reading level. He's in first grade. He's okay. He's healthy. Don't worry. He's in good hands. A woman in Iowa, when I did this, she was... It's a joke. I went to Guatemala. That was cool. So listen. Okay, we got time. People I've met in airports and shit. Look at I met Marin in the airport. He didn't remember, but I'm, look at the face he made. Because who am I walking up to him? Well, I met him. Shook his hand. The catfish dudes. <laughs> Chip Kid. Before the book, he was like, you're going to make a book. And I was like, no way. And I got to make a book, and Chip said it was going to happen. Neil Hamburger. I met him. That was cool. Was awesome. John Hodgman. I was just on John's show this last uh, couple nights ago in Brooklyn, which was really fun. And usually it's like real people like Wyatt Sinek and Jason Sudeikis and shit, John Hamm. And then something happened. There was probably a hiccup, and I got on the show somehow. That was cool. He's a buddy. I just did his new book cover. If you go look that up, that came out yesterday. Um, Jay Maskus uh, came to my pop-up. I grew up on Dinosaur Jr. I love Dinosaur Jr. Hmm? La Fonda? Yeah. Came to the show. Yeah, came to the show. Yeah. And then this turd. I'm at getting on my flight in Minneapolis down to Des Moines. So is Gene Simmons. But I didn't go shake his hand. Fuck Gene Simmons. <laughs> Well, right before this, a guy walks up with a Sharpie and his ticket, and he's like, Mr. Simmons, I saw you in 19. I'm right, I'm right to the edge. I'm right there, you know? Gene Simmons is right here, and I'm standing there, and I'm, I can see the, the dyed hair, the rock jeans, you know? I'm looking at him, and a guy walks up. He's right there, and I go, he says, can I get my, your autograph? And Gene's got his phone. He goes, back to his phone. I watched that. And I was like, man, that guy slinking away, that's who gave you the 300 million you're worth. And you can sign his fucking, his ticket. But he didn't do it. But so you know who you're fucking with? I'm a Delta Diamond Flyer. <laughs> and I got upgraded and I made sure that I just did one of these, you know, you know <laughs> onto, the, onto the big seat. And I get in the big seat and he doesn't. And then I'm in the big seat when he comes up the lane and, the, and then I go, well, hello, you know, he's coming to the thing. We get off in Des Moines and the whole place is looking at him. And we get up to the baggage claim and it's all quiet and weird. And people are looking at him and it's fucking Gene Simmons. And he, I see him 50 yards away stop for these three like lady cop things that are like, uh, like on like segways or something. And he puts his hands against the wall and he says, frisk me officer. I saw that. And like, oh, Gene, you lady killer. <laughs> you know? And he comes walking up to us, and, you know, if I fall off this, I just die. Now, if he comes walking up to us, 
And he gets to about right there. And there's this like circle of a hundred people. And he's right there and his glasses come off and he's kind of looking. And I have all my bags and shit from the merch table. And I just walk up and I go, holy shit, Ted Nugent. <laughs> and, just, and walk out. So fuck that. I met Richard Simmons in an airport. Look at that. So yeah. Boy, tough crowd, huh? From Gene Simmons, who sucks, to Richard Simmons, who rules. Okay. All right, wake up, New York. All right, thanks. Uh, when you guys are slumming later on, go follow me. I don't care. I've already been paid. Thank you. Uh, buy the book. We got a stack out there. People figured out how to get this thing. Go get a book. They're fun. I'm a little biased. We don't, you know, go to the site and get some merch. But thanks for coming, you guys. For listening to this shit. This is for my dad, always. So, yeah. That's it. There's so many people, it's hard to wave to them all.